Hello there and welcome to the release video for version 17 of the Google Ads API. I'm Mattia Tomazone, a developer relations engineer working on the Google Ads API team, and I will be walking you through the main updates in this release. There are several new features that I want to introduce, but before we get started, remember to like this video if you found it useful and to subscribe to the channel so that you can always be up to date with everything related to the Google Ads API. Let's start with a change that affects how you can create Performance Max campaigns. Starting with version 17, the Batch Job service provides support for asset group operations. This was the only missing piece preventing you from using batch processing to create and manage entire Performance Max campaigns. So now you can bundle all the mutate operations that you need to create a Performance Max campaign in a single batch job. If you want to learn more about this and other cool Performance Max features, stay tuned on our channel and on the Google Ads Developers blog. We will be hosting an online workshop soon, specifically themed on all things Performance Max, where we will discuss this new feature and a lot more. Speaking of Performance Max, one of the topics that always come up when we discuss Performance Max with the developer community is reporting. In version 17, we added three new reports to help you measure the performance of your campaigns. First of all, we have the Shopping Product Report, which corresponds to the Products page of the Google Ads UI. It supports returning data related to the current state of products from the Google Merchant Center accounts linked to a Google Ads account, such as issues affecting whether or not the product can show in ads. You can also get metrics such as clicks, impressions and conversions for current products, filterable by date. Then we have the Campaign Aggregate Asset View and the Channel Aggregate Asset View reports, which will help you have a better understanding of how your assets are serving, respectively in the context of a given campaign and of a given advertising channel, which means search rather than display or in-app advertising or demand gen. And speaking of demand gen, we have a change coming in version 17 that's been a long time coming. You see, the ManGen campaigns used to be referred to in the API as Discovery, but now we have renamed all instances of Discovery in the API to DemandGen. If you were working with the ManGen campaigns in the API before version 17, this is a breaking change that you need to be aware of when upgrading. We also have some changes in the conversion space. The main one is related to metrics about conversions by conversion date. They are now returned with every reporting response, even if their value is zero. This makes them consistent with other metrics, which were always already returning a value, even when it was zero. We also have a breaking change related to conversions coming from the Apple network. SKEd network conversion value has been renamed to SKEd network fine conversion value, and we added a new segment in the same area called SKEd network redistributed fine conversion value. There is also a change in the user list space. To segment audiences from user lists, you must now use the user list customer type resource instead of the customer lifecycle goal resource. To find out more about this change, check out the lifecycle goals guide that we just updated. I'll leave you a link to it in the video description below. Finally, if you have been following the releases of the Google Ads API for some time, you know that we have added the primary status field and its corresponding reasons field to several different resources over the course of the last releases. With version 17, you can retrieve the primary status and its reasons also for ad group criteria. This will help you understand whether or not an ad group criterion is serving optimally and identify any issues that may arise. Of course, this was not everything. These were just my own personal highlights among the many updates, changes and improvements that we introduced in version 17. For the complete list of changes that were included in this new release of the API, just take a look at the release notes. You can find that and other useful links just below here in the video description. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe to the channel so that you can always be up to date with everything related to the Google Ads API.